What about the plant? asked Matthew. Yes, said Emily. Why do pogles have magic plants in their gardens? There should be one in our garden, said Daniel. Why isn't the one in our garden? asked Susie. Well, I'll tell you why, laughed the story man. There is an easy answer to that. Magic plants can choose where they're going to live. There wouldn't be much point in being magic if you couldn't choose where you lived. And of course no sensible plant would choose to live in your garden with you trampling and charging about everywhere. There is also a very good reason why a magic plant grows in the Pogel's garden. And I'll tell you what it is. A long, long time ago. Oh, it must have been hundreds of years ago. There lived quite near here an old, kind, clever king who had been a good magician in his time. But now he was happy to sit in his garden among his flowers and leave the running of the country and all kingly work like that to his son, who was a young, handsome prince. The king's garden of flowers was a place where any king would be happy to sit, because all the plants and flowers in it were magic. Some of these plants were very old and wise and would talk to the king on many learned subjects. Other plants could sing and play instruments, and they were all beautiful to look at and smelt lovely. No wonder the king was happy. The garden was tended by the king's gardener, who was, of course, a Mr. Pogle. Was it our Mr. Pogle? asked Jonathan. I think it must have been, said the story man, because he looked just like our Mr. Pogel, and his wife, who was the royal housekeeper, looked just like Mrs. Pogel. Anyway, Mr. Pogel loved the plants. He treated them with great respect and care, and every year Mrs. Pogel made barrels and barrels of bilberry wine for them to drink. Well now, one fine evening in the summertime, the old king was sitting in his garden. His plants were singing and playing gentle music to please him, and he was dozing happily. Half asleep, he heard a carriage draw up at the gates. He opened his eyes and saw that the carriage was bright silver all over, drawn by a fine black horse. Inside the carriage was a very beautiful lady, all dressed in silver. The old king rose to his feet and walked to the gate to greet the lady. The music was so beautiful, she said. I had to stop and listen. Oh, please come in and listen more closely, said the old king. The beautiful silver lady walked through the garden of the king. And at once all the plants were still and silent. The old king commanded the plants to sing, but they remained silent. The old king was angry, but the lady smiled. Perhaps they are tired, she said kindly. I will sing to them instead. She picked up a lute and sang a song. It was a very beautiful song, so beautiful that when the young prince heard it he came out of the palace. And when he saw the silver lady playing, he fell in love with her at once. The young prince asked the old king to invite the silver lady into the palace so they might talk together. The king did so, and all three of them went into the palace, leaving the garden empty except for the flowers and Mr. and Mrs. Pogle, who had been working there. Why didn't you sing? asked Mr. Pogle. We couldn't, replied one of the plants. Something stopped us. Ah, magic, said Mrs. Pogel. There's magic around, I'll bet. And where's her carriage? The Pogels looked out of the gates. There was an old boot lying in the ditch. Near it, a rat was nibbling a piece of string. But there was no silver carriage or black horse. That's it, said Mrs. Pogel. I'll bet she's a witch. She might be a fairy godmother or something, suggested Mr. Pogel. They turn things into carriages. I doubt it, said Mrs. Pogel. The plants in the garden were inclined to agree with Mrs. Pogel. They felt they had been prevented from singing by magic, 
and they were sure it was evil magic. Well, there is only one way to find out, said the oldest and wisest of the plants. We must see the colour of her cloak. She's all dressed in silver, said Mr. Pogel. I know, I know, said the plant, but that may be magic. Cut a piece off and see what colour it is. If it stays silver, there is no magic. If it turns white, it is good magic. You bow to the lady and sew the piece back on. But if it turns black, you run for your life. Do you mean I just walk in there with my shears and without saying even excuse me please or begging your pardon, I just cut a snip off her silver gown? asked Mr. Pogel. That's right, said the plant. I couldn't do it, said Mr. Pogel. The king would be furious. The king, bless him, is old, said the plant. If that silver lady is a witch, she will have come here to enchant the young prince and make him want to marry her. Then, when she is married to the prince, the king will die of a mysterious illness, and she will be queen. Then there will be no pleasant gardens and gardeners, no quiet evenings in the sun. Just then the king came out onto the terrace. Come here, Pogles, he called cheerily. I have great news for you. The Pogles went into the hall of the palace, where the young prince and the silver lady were sitting hand in hand on a marble seat. You, my faithful Pogles, shall be the first to hear the glad news. The silver lady and the prince are to be married tomorrow. The Pogles bowed to the prince and his bride. Mr. Pogel, as he bent his head, knew what he must do. He walked quickly up to the silver lady, lifted his pruning shears and cut a piece from the end of her silver gown. The prince leapt to his feet. The silver lady screamed as if Mr. Pogel had cut off part of her, not just her gown. The king just sat there looking amazed, as the Pogels, holding a piece of black cloth, ran for their lives into the garden. Black, they shouted to the plants, and hid behind a tree. That won't do, whispered one of the plants. If she is a witch, she can see through trees. The silver lady's voice came faintly across the garden. She was saying that she felt a little upset by the peculiar incident and thought she would like to take a walk in the garden by herself. Here she comes, whispered one of the plants. Pull me up by the roots, whispered a shrub growing beside the wall. What? Don't waste time, you foolish pogles. Do as I say, hissed the shrub. The pogles hauled at the stem of the plant and it lifted easily. Underneath was a hole in the ground large enough for the Pogels to hide in. In you go, whispered the shrub. Pull me down on top of you. The Pogels jumped into the hole and pulled the shrub upright again on top of them. They were only just in time. The silver lady was standing in the middle of the garden, looking carefully about her. She held a pair of gold-rimmed spectacles in her hand. The glass in these spectacles glowed faintly. The Pogels knew what sort of glass it was and crouched low in their hole. They knew that with her spectacles a witch can see through almost anything. Well now, said the silver lady, I think I would like a few words with you plants. Two Pogels are hiding here somewhere. They have something that belongs to me. I want it. Tell me where they are, please. Her tone of voice was polite but firm. The plants did not answer her. The lady picked up Mr. Pogel's pruning shears. Answer me, plant, she said sweetly. The plants were silent. With a swift movement, the silver lady snipped off two flowers and trod them into the path. She cut off two flowers, whispered Mr. Pogel, looking up through the roots of the shrub. She mustn't do that. 
Those flowers are alive. Tell me, plants, said the silver lady sweetly. The plants did not tell her anything. Ah, well, she said, it is a pity I am transformed, because if I were in my usual form, I would drop a blight on you that would wither you all to nothing, like this. She took out a jewelled flask, and from it poured one drop of fluid onto a plant. The plant withered, crumpled, and died. There, like that. I can't stand this, said Mr. Pogle. Those plants are my friends. He climbed out of the hole and walked up to the silver lady. I'm here, he said simply. Leave the plants alone. What do you want? I want to tell you what is going to happen to you, said the silver lady. I shall marry the prince tomorrow, and soon I shall be the queen. Then you will all do exactly what I tell you to do. There will be none of this hiding in corners and not answering questions. Do you understand? Mrs. Pogle climbed out of the hole and walked up to the silver lady, holding the piece of black cloth in her hand. Is this what you are looking for? she asked. That's it, shrilled the silver lady. She made a grab for the piece of black cloth, but Mrs. Pogle dodged smartly out of the way. You're a witch, then, said Mrs. Pogle. This is witch's cloth and has magic power. Do I take it and show it to the king? For the first time, the silver lady looked frightened. Pogle, said Mrs. Pogle. Take that piece of old netting and wrap it round her. What, me? said Pogle, alarmed. Do as I say, said Mrs. Pogle. Mr. Pogle picked up the net. The king and the prince came out onto the terrace. Help! cried the silver lady in a plaintive voice. The Pogles are attacking me! The prince leapt onto the balustrade to run to her aid, but the old king put his hand on her arm. Leave them a moment, he said. Drag her out of the gate to the old boot, said Mrs. Pogle. Mr. Pogle started to pull on the net with a silver lady caught in it like a fish. Enough, shrilled the silver lady. That will do. The sky turned dark as the silver lady lifted her hands. The net flashed like fire in Mr. Pogle's hands and vanished. And there stood the black witch, the hag of night. Look at this, prince, shouted Mrs. Pogle, pointing at the ugly hag. Look at your wife-to-be. The witch raised herself to her full height and looked at them. You are vermin, she spat. You shall all be destroyed. A dark wind shall sweep you all to dust. She raised her horny fingers, which flashed green in the dusk, and started to pronounce the words of the spell. Even as she did so, a pale golden light shone on her from the direction of the palace. Her words faltered and stopped. Her fingers hardened. Her face hardened. She stood still. She was a block of black stone. What had happened? asked Lucy. Well... The old king was not a fool, even if his son the prince was. He knew there was something not quite right about the silver lady. He was also a very good magician, as well as a king. As soon as he saw the witch in her true form, he recited a spell to turn her to stone. What happened next? asked Jonathan. Well, that was the end of the witch, for a while anyway. But the point of the story is that the king was grateful to the Pogles, and so were the plant, and together they made a strong magic promise, which was that wherever the Pogles should live in the whole wide world, some magic plant would come and live there too, to protect and help and just be friends with the Pogles. And so it has always been, and still is. So that's that. The end of the story. Bedtime. But, 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 said Matthew, Emily, Jeremy, Daniel, Susie, Lucy, and Jonathan, 
No buts at all, said the story man. It is bedtime. Upstairs, the lot of you.